so I'm sitting here contemplating life, really putting off going into Pilates, to be completely honest. <clears throat> and I know I, I do a lot of videos, a lot of talking, a lot of funny stuff, posting things. But, you know, I talk a lot about mental health and financial literacy and, you know, all that good stuff. But, you know, I was watching Las Vegas Intake. Um, jail, the jail series last night while everybody else was watching the Super Bowl at my house. And I really find that stuff fascinating. And I think one of the things in the program that I really try to teach my clients more than fi even financial literacy is the ability to question um, what might not be so obvious. So we all know that you may not know, but most prisons are privately owned. They're privately contracted out for their food, um, the labor. They make money off of the labor uh, inside the prison. It's basically a form of modern day, I don't want to say modern day slavery, but, you know, let's just call it what it is. Or a big disparity in the wage gap between what the men and women in prison do and what they get paid for. Now, I understand they're there for punishment for various reasons, but, I mean, you've got people there for petty crimes, and they're paired up with child molesters, killers, stuff like that. So, let's just call it what it is. <clears throat> a lot of people make a lot of money when people are incarcerated, right? And then if they can herd them in there like cattle... And they're overcrowded, which they most of them are. They make even more money because you get more for less. So more people for for in less space. You know, if you can do the math, add and subtract. So as a society, do we really believe in cap captivity, or do we re believe in rehabilitation? I truly believe that we've gotten to the point that we believe in captivity because what doesn't happen a lot of times inside of prisons, and I've worked with a lot of people coming out of prison, is rehabilitation, right? Um, they're not really taught how to integrate back into society after a long stint. And so, that's why a lot of them come through our program because we help them, you know, get back into society based on where they're at and, and their base knowledge. I mean, they have a basic knowledge of, like, prison economics, like, you know, two honey buns and a hit of coffee will get your shirts ironed and your hair braided or, you know, something like that. Because common is cash. And... It also intertwines with addiction and mental health rehabilitation because our prison systems are full of people who need mental health treatment. So our prisons are also not set up to be mental health rehabilitation facilities or mental health hospitals, and they're not set up for drug rehab, drug and alcohol rehab. <clears throat> and if we had we pulled some of the money that we spend on mindless crap and put more money towards mental health resources, rehabilitation, and drug and alcohol rehab. Not only would that cut down on the people in prison, it would also cut down on the homelessness. It would save us a ton of money. You invest up front, you save on the back end. It's all dollars and cents. But why do we not do that? Why do we not do that? Like I've said before, if you take the lens of finance and shine it over a situation, it will show you because there's money to be made. People can say what they want to. You can believe what you want. But prisons and jails are business. More people messing up is good business. As sad as that is, that's the truth. All right, guys, let's go get our Pilates on. Be blessed.